One of the most important topics in our subject are ledger accounts and the general ledger. So we better figure out what those are and what they mean. So basically we looked at an accounting process so far. So for pretty much every business, this is what happens. Stage one, transactions occur every day and there's source documents for those. Then we'll record them. We've got to record them in the accounting system. And then at the end of each month, we do some reports and they're called the income statement, the cash flow statement and the balance sheet. And then once we prepare those reports, we need to be able to analyze them and make decisions. So people like owners and investors, suppliers, banks and lenders, employees and the government. So that's kind of what we do. Uh, and every business does really when you think about it. But in chapter two, what we learned and what we sort of did was we said, well, every time a transaction occurs, we do a new balance sheet. So there was a transaction. We did a balance sheet. So transaction one, we made balance sheet number one. Then a second transaction occurred. We did a second balance sheet. Then a third transaction occurred. We did a third balance sheet and so on. Well, that's stupid. That's too hard, too difficult. It's not practical. If you think about, say, a business like Kmart today, since it opened, there's probably been 10,000 transactions. You can't do 10,000 new balance sheets all the time. So what we kind of need to do is sort of look at our process here and go, well, we're really doing this at this point. We're just going stage one, transactions happen. And then we're updating, going straight to stage three. We're making these reports after every transaction and that's stupid. So what we need to do is we kind of need to find a place um, so, or a system so we can just do a balance sheet at the start of the month and at the end of the month. And what we're going to do is say, let's take July. We want a balance sheet from the beginning of July. And then we just want one at the end after all the transactions occur. So we have a balance sheet at the beginning of the period. All the transactions for the period occur. And then we make another balance sheet. So this uh, uh, particular topic is basically saying, well, where do all these transactions go then during the period? If we're not going to put them straight into the balance sheet, we're only going to make a balance sheet at the end of the month. Where are they going to go? for all of July in this case. And the answer to that is they're gonna go in ledger accounts and the general ledger. So that's gonna be this step here. So we're gonna have a balance sheet at the beginning of the period. We're gonna record all the transactions in ledgers and the general ledger. And then we're gonna make a new balance sheet at the end of July. So what is a ledger account? Well, it's just a big T. And in fact, in a lot of old textbooks, um, many years ago, we just used to call them T accounts because it yeah, it looks like a big T. The name of the account will be at the top. So for example, cash at bank or bank or inventory or accounts payable, loan, that sort of thing. And then we say the left side, that's called the debit side. And then the right hand side, that's called the credit side. And like we said, we can also call that a T account. So the main thing there is big T, Left hand side is called debits, right hand side is called credits. So every single item in the firm's records will have a ledger account. So there will be a ledger account for all the assets. So there's one for cash at bank, one for accounts receivable, one for inventory, premises, computers, and so on. There will be a ledger account for all the liabilities. So to take this example, one for the loan, one for accounts payable, one for a mortgage. There will be one for owner's equity accounts, so capital and drawings. There'll be one for the revenues, we've got cash sales and credit sales, and there'll be one for all of the expenses. We've got printing, wages, advertising, and insurance. So what we've got here is, I think, what's that? 16 separate ledger accounts. So that's what these are, ledgers. And collectively, that is known as the general ledger. So the general ledger for this particular business has 16 ledger accounts in it. One for all the assets, the liabilities, the owner's equities, the revenues, and the expenses. So that's what the general ledger is. So the accounting process now, we're just going to change a little bit and say, well, stage one, all these transactions happen every day. Um, yeah, that's this bit here that's changing. We're going to say, well, when we record these transactions in the accounting system, where are they going to go? They're going to go in the general ledger into all these single ledger accounts. And then the rest will be the same. We'll still do the reports at the end of the month, and then we'll still analyze and make decisions from those reports. So if we could summarize this and say, well, what's the purpose of, of the ledger accounts and the general ledger? We'd say it's too difficult to make a brand new balance sheet, income statement and cash flow statement after every single transaction that happens. That's stupid. That's not efficient. So the business needs somewhere else to record each individual transaction during the period. And the place where we do that is called the ledger accounts, which, and if we take all the ledger accounts collectively, that is called the general ledger. So then at the end of the period, the titles of the ledger accounts are simply used to make the balance sheet the income statement and the cash flow statement for that period. So the next thing we better learn is how to fill in these ledger accounts and we'll do that in the next video.